tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Hi, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about the seahorses of Hawaii. We'll learn about different kinds of Hawaiian seahorses and get to see them in their ocean paradise. We'll meet a man named Jeff Melisson, the author of A Field Guide to Blackwater Diving in Hawaii. Jeff goes night diving in the vast open ocean to get photographs of these amazing sea creatures. We'll even see some pregnant male seahorses. What? That's right, the males are the ones that give birth. Whoa! Then I'll show you how to draw a seahorse, and we'll have a seahorse painting party. All this on an amazingly aquatic episode of... When we return, we'll learn more about Hawaii seahorses. Honuen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available online at patrickchingart.com The amazingly interesting seahorse is actually a fish with bony rings throughout its body, a strong tail, and a long snout. Its face and arched neck resemble that of a magnificent horse, and so it gets its popular name of seahorse. The scientific name for seahorse is hippocampus. It is derived from the Greek words hippo, meaning horse, and campus, meaning sea monster. The Hawaiian name for seahorse is mo'olio, or reptilian horse. There are a few species of seahorses known to exist in Hawaii. The thorny seahorse is so rare that only a couple of specimens have been found in Hawaiian waters. This new species of seahorse was recently discovered deep in the waters of Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument around the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. The smooth seahorse is the largest of Hawaii's seahorses, with an average size of 5 or 6 inches. Most of them are a drab brownish dark olive green color. A few of them are strikingly yellow, and sometimes they can even be an orangish color. Seahorses are related to pipefish, which are like seahorses but lack the curves. Seahorses and pipefish feed on small shellfish and plankton. Seahorses are not especially strong swimmers. Their dorsal fins move rapidly to help them move through the water. They also have pectoral fins, which are located in the area on the side of the head, right where you'd expect an ear to be. One of the most interesting things about seahorses is that the males are the ones that give birth. A pair of seahorses usually mate for life, and the female deposits the young eggs into the male's brood pouch. After a few weeks, thousands of tiny seahorses are expelled from the bulging pouch of the male. One thing I notice is that every time I find a seahorse, it always turns its back to me. I realize that it's not just cause it's shy, but it's much more camouflaged that way. Besides, their eyes can move independently of each other, and though I didn't notice it at first, they were still watching me.
Fisher's seahorse, also known as the Hawaiian seahorse, is found in the deep open ocean. Here to tell us about it is Jeff Malayson. Hi, I'm Jeff Malayson, and I'm an underwater photographer and author of A Field Guide to Blackwater Diving in Hawaii. Blackwater diving is where we go many, many miles offshore at night to look at, well, a couple of different types of animals. One of those being plankton that live up near the surface of the water, and another one being vertical migrators that live very, very, very deep, at least during the day. Now, there's not a lot to eat that far deep during the day, thousands of feet underwater, so every night they have to come up to the surface to feed off of all of that plankton. And that's where I go scuba diving to go look and photograph animals. And this wall behind me, you see a smattering of those, including like squids and octopuses and larval fishes and angler fishes and cookie cutter sharks. But what I'm here to talk to you today about are seahorses. The one that I see is called the pelagic seahorse or hippocampus fisheri. Uh, pelagic means open ocean, so these animals never come back to shore. They spend their entire lives drifting around the open sea, and they've only been found around the Hawaiian Islands. And they tend to be kind of small, about yay big. So hippocampus fisheri, um, that's the seahorse that we see. Anyway, Patrick, thank you so much for letting me on your show today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Shall we wrap that up? we have enough to give them? I think so. I, that was perfect. Now get your papers, pencils, and whatever you want to draw with ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw a seahorse. Hey friends, it's me, Patrick Ching, and I'm here to introduce you to the Papa Hanao Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. All you gotta do is just go to uh, www.papahanaomokuakeasong.com and here I'm going to do it right here see it's on the computer and then when the website comes up it might start playing some music and if not you just press this little button right there and bing magic that's Kavika Kahiapo and he's telling us about this song download the coloring book pages and the ukulele chords. Hmm. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Scroll down and get the free coloring book pages. Right there, you can download the coloring book pages, print them out, and color them. See the da 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 now this downloads better with a laptop computer rather than a um, handheld device. Kavika Kahiapo. So if you want to learn a lot and have fun doing it, download, print, and color the pages at papahanaomokuakeasong.com. PapahanaomokuakeaSong.com Sacred places need a kea Papahanaomokuakea All right. All right, friends, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a seahorse. And you're going to notice it's got some similarities to a real horse. <laughs> and you know I like to start off uh, pressing softly with a pencil. I'll be using a pen so you can see it, but you can be using a pencil. And remember that when we start, we do press softly. How are we going to press? Softly, that's right. Why do we press softly? Well, we press softly so that uh, you don't dig into the paper in case you want to erase lines or just, you know, cover them up later with darker lines and not even notice them. It's good to press softly in the beginning and then when you know where you're going, where you want to put things, then you press a little harder. You guys ready? 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 Everybody ready? Okay. Now I'm going to form up my seahorse with some shapes, kind of like some circles and stuff. I'm going to put a circle right here for the head, okay? And I'll have a snout over here and another little circle right around there connect them together with 
couple of lines. You see the head of the seahorse shaping up already? And see that big old cheek right there? Just like a real horse, yeah? Chomping down on grass or seaweed or whatever um, they eat. And I'm gonna do an oval shape for the body and another circle over there for the tail, okay? So right there's the head. I'll put an oval shape for the body right around there. And right down here, I'll put a little circle where the tail's gonna go. And boom, 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 boom. That's the shape of my seahorse. I'll connect the head to the body with a little bit of a, a little bit of that kind of action, and you know, kind of connect it to the tail with a little bit of that. Okay, so you see that I'm forming up my seahorse. Give him a little bit of a couple little bumps up there, and right over here. Um, is where the tail comes down. I'm going to give a little bit of a circle and then come around back here and do, 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 do. okay. So right there I formed up most of my seahorse except a couple of little cute things and that is a fin back there. Yeah, it's called a dorsal fin. Bing, bing, bing. They also got a fin back there. I don't know what it's doing there but you know, you can kind of give it a little bit of a fin back there too. Bing, bing, bing. What else is missing? Well, the mock of the eye. Yep, I like to give it a little circle for the pupil and a big, big kind of a roundness around the mock eye. Yeah, make them look real cute. Uh, there's also a couple of lines of spines. Yeah, lines of spines. That sounds like a cat in the hat, but. There are some lines of spines and they're going to come down like the back part of the seahorse and there's one that kind of comes more down the front part okay and in those spines you can make some lines going this way yeah really so that is a simple yet effective way of forming up a seahorse. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna make something that the seahorse is hanging on to, and I'll make him hanging on to some uh, limo, some algae. Um, uh, babayole, yeah, the foot of the rat seaweed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make it coming out right here. Yeah, and this is kind of a fun type of a limo to make. And I'll have some over here. It's got all kinds of beautiful, like succulent shapes. Oh, so nice. Yeah. And this is another opportunity for you to add color to your drawing, okay? So, um, yeah, I'll make that plant coming down there. And, and you could make coral or whatever, you know, things swimming in the background. Other seahorse, you know, maybe a uh, man seahorse or lady seahorse. Sea turtles, uh, <laughs> sea cucumbers, whatever you want to put in your painting you get to, okay? Okay, so now that we've got our seahorse formed up and we got some background, we've got some uh, limu, the babayoli limu, I'm going to get a bigger pen. You can press harder with your pencil or you can get a pen or marker or whatever. And I'm going to start my details now. I tell you what, I'm going to start right around his cheek over there or her cheek. Bing, 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 bing. Nice and big cheek, kind of like the mouth like that, little bump right there above the eye, got a little like horn over there, yeah, coming around the back, coming around the back, all the way to the tail. I'm going to stop right here because remember that there is a little bit of a seaweed coming out here that's in front of his tail a little bit, okay? So I'll make that one there first. Now I'm going to continue to do the tail, and this is going to be fun. Come around. Okay, remember to stop there because the seaweed is in the front. Come around. All right. There we go. Yeah, we can have even a little gap over here, and the tail comes back out over here. Okay, now. Starting here from under the chin, I'm going to come around like the belly. Yeah, they got a little belly on them. Bing, bing. You see the shape of my seahorse? Tail coming around. 
kind of going on to the seaweed back here. Remember, that's the foot of the rat, Bava Yole Limu. And we can make the Limu any kind of shapes you want. You'll see some pictures of this type of Limu. And uh, you can go ahead and put your Limu in there. It's another opportunity to put a little bit of greenery in your drawing or your painting. I'll make a little bit of the Limu going behind the seahorse, okay? Now I'm going to add those fins, little fins. Uh, they got like two fins on their back over here that kind of overlap a little bit. And you can make little sprigs. They also got a little fin behind there, like, you know, where an ear goes or something, but it's a little fin, and it's right there. And it got some little sprigs too. Now the maka, the eye, you know, that's where all the charm happens in, a, in almost everything. People, animals, and seahorses. So let's put a nice little dark circle. Maybe you can put a little white dot in it, so it's like a sparkling eye. And then you got a big old circle around the eye, yeah? And you know that they have like little lines in them like that. And it looks pretty cool. Um, now we can start to make the spiny ribs, you know? Remember we had these rows, we got like two rows. So you can kind of boom, 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 boom. Notice I'm giving a little bit of a dip where those horizontal lines go. And this line can kind of come around the tail also. So you get kind of a line of spines within the tail too. Yeah, it can get confusing. Let's do the next row, okay? This row of spines. Notice I give him a little bit of a dip every time I come to that horizontal line, okay? And now I'm going to draw the horizontal lines. Okay, just have fun. Oh yeah. And you know, it depends how detailed you want to get. You can make these lines come all around like that. There you have it, a little seahorse. Now you can go in and put more details, you know, maybe uh, little things like this. Maybe you can give them a little mouth and, doot doot doot. you know, just kind of little lines to show some shape in there. And bing, 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 bing. Yeah. Oh, don't forget where the stem of the Vavaioli Limu comes from. And there you have it, a seahorse on a Vavaioli. <laughs> now I'll take this opportunity to talk a little bit about coloring. Notice that when I color I do the background first just like I do my paintings. I also put in my light colors first because it's a lot easier to make things darker and it's very hard to make things lighter. One good tip is that if you like the way your drawing came out Get a picture of it so you can make prints and color that same picture over and over again and give some to your sisters and your mothers and your daughters and your sons and your brothers and your pets and everybody you can give a copy to. Have some fun. When we return, we'll have some painting fun. If I were a painter, I would paint my reverie. If that's the only way for you to be with me, we'd be there together, just like we used to be. Underneath the swelling skies for all to see And I'm dreaming of a place where I could see your face And 
what better way to send off the seahorse episode than a seahorse painting party at the seashore. First we went over our drawing lessons. And then we started painting. First we did the background. And then the seahorses. And then we just let the paint and the laughter flow. By the end of the party, we had a lot of fun and a whole herd of painted seahorses. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's seahorses. I'd love to see what you created, so why don't you send pictures of your art to aloha at patrickching.com. <laughs> aloha.